ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning and thank you for joining us here uh, for our press conference uh, on a Monday morning. We do appreciate the fact that many of you have travelled with relatively short notice. Uh, my name's Paul Oakden, I'm the Chief Executive of Reform UK. About four years ago, uh, a small group of us started a journey and the purpose of that journey was very simple. It was to do something that hadn't been done for decades. To start a political movement that was based not on a single policy, but on uh, principles and values and ideas. A political movement that had the potential, the ability to take on a tiled old political establishment that had forgotten that it serves the people. And we are here to remind them of that. We've worked very hard, our momentum has grown, and today is a significant day in the development of our party, in the development of Reform UK. A party that after four years has grown to third in the polls, 14%, getting record by-election results for us. We're very, very proud of it, all largely as, a, as a, uh, a consequence of the hard work and determination of our leader, who I'm delighted to welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Tice. Good morning, everybody. Very good to see you this Monday morning. Thanks for being here. Now, something extraordinary happened last week. The Chancellor, he said, we have a plan, and the plan is working. The Prime Minister repeats it endlessly. Clearly no one's told them that the economy, our country, is in recession. Clearly no one's told them that that recession per person is the longest since records began almost 70 years ago. People are getting poorer. That recession, almost two years per person. If that's their plan, well, it's not the plan of the British people to get poorer. Let's be honest, it's not surprising they're sinking in the polls if they think a recession is a good idea. And something significant has changed in recent months. I've noticed people's concerns and anxiety has turned to anger and fury. Because nothing works. Britain is broken. And we all know who broke it. There are so many areas where it's broken. But let me just give you a few examples. I mean, there is absolute fury across the country that the Tories have imposed on us without any democratic consent whatsoever, in complete breach of what they promised in the 2019 manifesto and previous manifestos, they've imposed on us mass immigration that we can see from the data is making us poorer. No question whatsoever. People also, separately, are appalled at what's going on in our streets, in our towns and our cities, week in, week out, with these anti-Semitic, hate-filled, pro-Hamas marches that is leading to genuine fear. The Jewish community in London, afraid to go out at the weekend. Many of them thinking about leaving London to go back to Israel. What a shocking indictment of the performance of the boss of the Met Police, of the person in charge of security in London, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, of the Home Secretary and of the Prime Minister, that the Jewish community are terrified. Absolutely appalling. Separately, people are horrified, horrified that this gender ideology is infecting our schools, poisoning the minds of our children, parents, grandparents in their millions, shocked by this. And also, people are waking up to the absurd multi-trillion pound cost of this obsession with net zero. But any of us who want to talk about this, oh no, we're a bigot, yeah, we're mis-smeared, we must be labelled, we're phobic in some way. No, we're not. We're just talking common sense. The genuine concerns of tens of millions of people up and down the country. And it's only Reform UK that is prepared to have that conversation. I've said it before, but I have to say, I think the Westminster establishment has never been more out of touch with the concerns of tens of millions of hard-working British people up and down the country. That's why we're going up in the polls. Just last week, 
We were f only 5% behind the Tories who are sinking under sinking Sunak to just 18%. We're going up and they're going down. Now, many people think this is a short-term pressure group for one election. Forget it. You're wrong. This is a serious medium-term plan. We have to shape an influence and change the course of direction of this country of ours. Because at the moment, it is broken and people are getting poorer. And where does this start? Well, I'll tell you where we're polling even higher. And that, of course, is in the Red Wall. Millions and millions of people, as they hear about us, they say, thank heavens for reform. So let's be clear about our ambition. It's bold. It's ambitious. In the Red Wall, this election, we want to replace the Tories as the main alternative to Starmageddon. That's what it is. It's a nightmare coming to everyone near you in 2024. So we're going to replace the Tories in the Red Wall, which means we need a champion, of course, of the Red Wall, someone who completely understands it, who is trusted by voters to tell it as it is, no nonsense, no waffle, clear, basic common sense. And I'm delighted to announce that I have found that champion of the Red Wall for Reform UK. He's also, coincidentally, going to be Reform UK's first member of Parliament in the House of Commons. He is, of course, a person of great integrity, no nonsense, and is the Member of Parliament in the County of Nottinghamshire for Ashfield. Please welcome Mr Lee Anderson. Thank you very much indeed. Thank Brilliant. You. Let's go have a quick, uh, quick photo. Of Who said that? He's not having an interview now. He's not having an interview. Brilliant. Well done. Over to you. Can you see me? For, can you all see me here? So I want to keep it brief, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will start by saying I want my country back. Over the last year or so, I've had to do a lot of soul searching on my political journey. And it was laughing. And I don't expect much in politics other than to be able to speak my mind and speak on behalf... Is that you, Harry, laughing? Speak on behalf of my friends, family and my constituents. Now, I might not know a lot of these long words some of the people use in Parliament, but I know a few short ones. Uh, but unfortunately, this sometimes leads me to be labelled as controversial, controversial in my opinions. But my opinions are not controversial. They are opinions which are shared by millions of people up and down the country. It's not controversial to be concerned about illegal immigration. It's not controversial to be concerned about legal migration. It's not controversial to be, you know, worried, concerned about the Metropolitan Police and a failing London Mayor and the hate marchers, the street crime and the shoplifters literally getting away with ruining businesses on a daily basis. It's not controversial to fight back in a culture war, a culture war that is sweeping our nation. I am proud of our great country and the gifts it has given to the world over hundreds of years. Gifts like the Industrial Revolution, railways, culture, sports, medicine, such as vaccines, which have saved hundreds of millions of lives. And we've defeated fascism in two world wars. We've always punched above our weight on the international stage. But now, like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are giving away our way of life. We are allowing people to erase our history. We are giving up our streets to a minority of people who literally hate our way of life. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. And quite frankly, some of them need to get out more. I made some remarks a few weeks back about the London Mayor. 
for which I was stripped of the whip in the, from the Conservative Party. And let me be clear, right now, on this stage, I will not apologise. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. People will say that I've took a gamble, and I'm prepared to gamble on myself, as I know from my mailbag how many people in this country support Reform UK on what they have to say. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Now, this may sound offensive to the Liberal elite, but it's not offensive to my friends, my family, my constituents, and some of my donors. Constituents like my mum and dad, who told me they could not vote for me unless I joined Reform UK. My parents are both nearly 80, and they get it, and I must not let them down. As I said at the beginning, I want my country back. Thank you. Brilliant. Well done. Fantastic. Yeah? Fantastic. So, um, thank you for that. I'm going to take some questions from uh, members of the media and the press. We'll start with uh, the People's Channel. Chris Hope, GB News. Uh, Chris Hope from GB News. Lee Anson, on the 2nd of January, you said reform is not the answer. It leaves the door open for Sir Keir Starmer. What has changed in 10 weeks? And how can voters trust you at the election when you so publicly betrayed the Tories? Well, over the last 10 weeks, we've seen, well, one thing, big thing changed last week, Chopper, and that was uh, Mr Galloway coming into Parliament. And we have to fight back as a, as a country. And the only party that's offering that fight back, what I can see, is Reform UK. You know, this is, this is a big problem. It's a concern. It's worrying my constituents and constituents, people up and down the country, who are worried about people like George Galloway getting into Parliament. We have to fight back. And unfortunately, the Conservative Party and the Labour Party won't fight back. This party will fight back, and that's why I've joined. And there is another big difference, Chris. On the 3rd of January, I said that we were facing a recession, that you cannot grow the economy with the burdens that I identified them, of the highest taxes, the highest wasteful government spending, nanny state regulations, mass immigration, and net zero. A month later, I was proved right. Sadly, the economy is in recession, as I said. For two years per person, we are in recession. That's what's changed. There's a massive, massive wake-up call. I hope that helps. Beth, you next. Thank you. Mr Anderson, um, you talked there about a lot of soul searching. You were a Labour backer, then you were a Conservative MP, now you're defecting to reform. What do you say to people that say the problem isn't all these parties, the problem is you, and this is all about attention seeking, and this has been very disloyal to Rishi Sunak, who made you Deputy Party Chair, and also to other colleagues that have backed you very verbally in recent weeks and are probably very upset and angry with you that you're going to only hurt their chances in a general election. What's your answer to them? Thank you. Country, constituency and then party. Next question please, Richard. <laughs> what, sorry. No, that, no, next what, question. What, 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 what do you say please. to that, your colleagues the answer, Beth. who feel really let down this I've morning? Given Beth, next Beth, question please. Millions of people who trusted the Tories to deliver Brexit, to reduce immigration. They are the people who count, the voters, not the representatives in Parliament. That is the difference. We focus on the concerns of the British people. OK, let me put, what's your oh, no, message to we're Mr. We're going to move there. next. We're going Alison, down the line. Alison, Alison. He hasn't answered my question. Yeah. Well, well, Alison. Okay, Hello. I had 4,000 emails last week uh, in my inbox. I've got um, a sack full of mail as well, not just from my constituency, Alison, from all around the country. And when my friends and my family and my staff are telling me to join the Reform Party, then I have to listen. You know, like I said to Beth earlier, my country comes first, then my constituency, then a political party. And that's answered all your questions, Beth. Chris Mason, BBC. Thank you, Chris Mason, uh, BBC News. We've seen in the past, Mr Anderson, uh, def defectees from the Conservative Party trigger a by-election. We saw it with Douglas Carswell, we saw it with Mark yeah. Reckless uh, joining the predecessor party yeah. of, of UK. Why not do the same right well, now? Well, you're talking about Mark Reckless. It'd be pretty reckless of me to suggest a by-election when we could have a general election in May. There's your answer. Why not go I mean, for it, though, and for it and well, there's Because, right. because yeah. Chris, it costs a fortune. Chris, I think actually millions of people are sick of parliamentarians wasting taxpayers' cash. We've got a general election within weeks or months. 
actually what we've got to focus is getting the message out yeah. to the British people about the choices and the option. And that's the joy of democracy. Different parties, Harry. different views. That's Harry, great. Harry, Harry Cole. Harry. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, Mr. Anson. Um, just a few weeks ago, you described Mr. Tice as a pound shop Nigel Farage, yes. whose reforms answered Diane Abbott. <laughs> yeah. What made you change your mind? And the question to Mr. Tice, do you, do you agree with what uh, Mr. Anderson said about the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan? Do you stand by those comments and you're happy to share a platform with him? Look, I absolutely, and I think millions of British people endorse the concerns and sentiments of what Lee was saying, which is that we are sick and tired of our streets being taken over by these pro-Hamas, <coughs> extremist, anti-Semitic uh, people and Islamist extremists. That's the concerns that people want to hear about. And um, you know, in terms of pence, pounds, I tell you what, maybe you know, if you look after the pence, the pounds look after themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and also on that point, um, Harry, somebody described uh, you as a pound shop Glen Owen. And I didn't talk about that. Next. <laughs> Thank you. Harry Horton, ITV News. Um, Lee Anderson, you've had three political parties now uh, in six years. Um, how long are you planning to stick with reform? And why should people trust you, uh, given that clearly your own political beliefs seem to be changing? No, my, no, and, 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 and Richard, for you, um, how many of the Tory MPs are you talking to? And realistically, do you think any more will switch to reform before the general election? Well, first of all, my political beliefs have never changed at all. Um, I believe in pol I think politics is quite simple. You listen to what people have to say, then you go to that place and carry it out, and it's that simple. And we're not doing that. And I think this party will allow me to speak on behalf of not just my constituents, who are furious with what's happening in that place, but millions of people up and down the country. And like I said before, it's my country has to come first, and I'm scared of what we're doing at the moment in this country. We are giving this country away, and it's got to stop. And to answer your questions, uh, I will be surprised if uh, there are not more uh, other MPs from other parties who don't join reform before the general election. Could be wrong if it's called a week on Friday, but uh, otherwise I'll be surprised. Labour. Uh, who's that? Um, yeah, Gary. Gary Gibbon, Channel 4 News. Thank you. Um, if I understood uh, your new party leader when he was doing the introduction, he said Britain's broken and the Tories broke it. Do you agree? I think every, every party is broken. We, it's not just the Tory party, it's the Labour party, it's Parliament, Gary. It's the whole of Parliament. Said, oh, listen to what I have to say. It's the whole of Parliament, the whole, the whole system, the whole democratic system in this country is rigged. It doesn't represent, really, what people are saying. I live in the real world. That's a place called Ashfield, Gary. It's, just, it's a junction 28, if you ever want to pop in. When I go into the pubs and shops and walk down the street at the weekend, people are talking like me. They're talking like Lee Anderson. They're not talking like you lot or the MPs in there, they live in the real world and they've got real concerns about the cost of living, about migration, legal migration, illegal migration, stuff like that. They're talking about you know, the crime on the streets, the shoplifting, the fact that you can't get a police officer turn up to, to, to your house if it gets burgled, the fact that people are pulling their own teeth out, you can't get a GP appointment. So I'm here to speak up for them, not for you, Lol. Andy. Thank you very much. Um, Andy Bell, 5 News. Hi, Andy. Uh, Lee Anderson, haven't you just made it much harder for your Conservative colleagues who are fighting to try and hang on to their seats? Haven't you just helped Keir Starmer win the next election? Do you feel comfortable with that? Somebody, um, Andy, has to make a stand. And I said it last week, there's 650 MPs in that building over there. And if not one can speak out for the good of this country, then quite frankly, what's the point in being there? I have to live with my conscience. My conscience is clear. When I go and see my parents yesterday on Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day, Mother, and they say to me, Lee, you need to join reform. This country needs saving. Uh, we're absolutely fed up with what's happening on the streets of London. We're fed up with what's happening up and down the country. We're just fed up. We need change. If my parents are saying that, then I, I can sleep, sleep well at night. I've got a very simple message. Vote Tory, get Starmer. Vote reform, get reform. Who's next? Thank you very much. George Parker from the Financial Times. Uh, Mr. Tice, a question to you first of all. You talked about anti-Semitism and the rise in anti-Semitism. Are you equally worried about the rise in anti-Muslim hatred and attacks on the Muslim community? And to you, Mr. Anderson, just um, specifically on the extremism policies of Rishi Sunak, he gave a speech on the steps of Downing Street last week. Michael Gove's got a new announcement on extremism policy this week. Do you think your former party is doing the right things to tackle extremism? Uh, look, all extremism and all hate is bad, but we are clearly seeing that the real, real, most frightening 
impact on our streets and in our towns and cities at the moment is the threats to the Jewish community. I touched on it in my speech. I'll reinforce it. It's utterly appalling. And I called for these marches to be banned on October the 11th because I went on the very first one on October the 9th. I was ranted at, I was abused, I was shouted at. Israel hadn't even responded by then. I knew there was going to be a problem. And I tell you what, if they'd been banned then, we would not as a nation be where we are now and the Jewish community would not be terrified. And so, you know, I think actually, uh, I, I, sadly, I was right then and I'm still right now. Who's next? Just to the uh, right of you. Sorry, you want to... Yeah, sorry. Well, I mean, words, words are all well and good. Um, and I agreed with pretty much everything uh, the PM had to say on the steps of Downing Street a few weeks back, but we don't want words anymore. We want action. And when people up and down the country see these marches, these demonstrations in, in, uh, in central London, they get emboldened. And then it starts happening everywhere else. And we've seen MPs' offices attacked. We've seen MPs attacked. In the street, we see in council meetings or, or, or political meetings, you know, ambushed. And we're not doing enough. I don't feel safe. I'm, you know, on, sometimes on a Wednesday night walking out there, I have to use a different, a different exit route. So, yeah, words are one thing, but we want to see action. And it's funny, this year is 40 years since the miners' strike, something which my dad was a striking miner, um, and I would go on picket lines with my dad, and the policing then was completely different, and I don't agree with everything the police did at the time, because some of it was quite horrible. But they had a job to do. They, they had to keep the peace, and they had to make sure that men who wanted to go to work got to work, and they did a job. They, did a, they, did, made, they made sure that working miners got to, got to work in places like Ashfield, where, where I represent. So I think the police... I don't blame the officers on the ground, I blame the, the chiefs, I blame Mayor Khan. And it's all well and good us keep um, blaming Mayor Khan, but I keep hearing words in Parliament like it's unacceptable for this to happen. I'm sick to death at hearing the word unacceptable. We need action, and the British people deserve action. And I, and I tell you what, I mean, the fact that on Saturday you had a protester who was holding up a placard stating English law, which is that Hamas are terrorists, they are a prescribed organisation. He was abused, he was assaulted, and yet he was arrested, which basically says, under the current failing leadership of the Met Police, the Met Police are now on the side of the Hamas supporters. Deeply shotting, shocking, utterly woeful and unacceptable. Just to your right. Uh, thanks, Richard. Adam Payne from Politics Home. A question for Lee Anderson. Lee, both Richard and Reform's Deputy Leader Ben Habib have talked about, on several occasions, how they want to obliterate the Conservatives at the next general election. Do you share that objective? It's not an objective which is at the uh, top of my agenda. I my, uh, mean, my, my vision for this party is to, to win seats like Ashfield. My priority is winning Ashfield and, and places like Ashfield. Places that I think have been let down by, by my old party. It, you know, Boris said in 2019 that the people in places like Ashfield had lent the vote, and they had people like my parents and my family and my friends, voted Conservative for the very first time with high expectations. And the promises have not been delivered. And, you know, I have to be with a party that puts this country first, rather than their mates at the tea parties and clinking their champagne glasses or wherever they, they go over the evening, scared to upset people. Well, I'm not scared to upset a few people, roughly a few feathers, but you know what? I invite any of you, mind you, you're normally there up in Nashville to the weekend, a lot of you, um, especially at Guardian, knocking on a thousand doors to try and get a bad comment out of me, and you're going to struggle with that one, by the way. Next question. That is, hi. That, that. Uh, thank you. Kate, Kate McCann from Times Radio. Um, Lee Anderson, you've said a number of times that you want to get your country back. For yeah. the people listening, can you explain who has control of the country at the moment and how you intend to get it back? And uh, to Richard, is this the first of many MP defections? Thank you. When, when, when I go out to that place over there, Kate, on a Wednesday night and I see thousands of people, an angry bay mob, flashing you know, graphics onto Big Ben, Elizabeth Tower, which says, from the river to the sea, we have not got control of our streets. These are, this is a murderous, vile, wicked sort of thing that you see on our streets. And the police just stand there and do nothing. And then, like Richard said earlier, you see one chap with Hamas as a terrorist organisation, which it is, and six burly coppers wrestle him to the ground and drag him off. How is that right? How is that right in this country in this day and age? It's not. And I feel, you know, people are looking at this on TV. We work in a bubble in that place over there, which is MPs, which is Lords, Ladies, the media, staffers, whoever. But in the real world, my parents, who I keep banging on about, are watching this on TV every night, and quite frankly, they're disgusted. It's their country. Here's another way that I express it, Kate, which is that 
When we grew up, we were taught by our parents to trust three things. You could trust the government, you could trust the police, and you could trust the post office. That was literally the embodiment of the United Kingdom. And now, sadly, trust in all those three entities and institutions has completely collapsed. That is actually about getting our country back, trusting what we want to trust, what we used to trust when the country worked. And actually, when individuals were getting wealthier every year. To answer your question about the MPs, well, look, let's wait and see. But unless there's an election called in the next uh, few, uh, few days, and if it is, Prime Minister, we're ready. 630 MPs up and down England, Scotland, Wales, we are ready. Uh, then, um, uh, then, yes, I would expect uh, some more to follow. Morning, Dave. Um, there have been plenty of reports that money was offered at, in previous uh, attempts to get Lee over. Can you confirm that absolutely no cash has exchanged hands ahead of today? Uh, and Lee, uh, do you have a message for any of your old Tory MP mates who might be wavering in two minds, thinking of defecting, upset with Mr Sunak? What's your pitch to get them to cross the floor with you? Well, so to be clear, no money has been offered at all. Uh, so we'll clear that one up straight away. And message to my colleagues is... Look, it's a sad day that I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my colleagues, um, but if I'm honest, this time next year they'll be sat on the same benches as me. And let's be clear, here's the deal. The deal is we're going to get Lee re-elected at the general election as Reform UK's MP, and the second part of the deal is Lee is going to be a fantastic champion of the Red Wall, and we are going to replace the Tories as the alternative to Starmageddon in the Red Wall. That's the deal. One more here. Yes. Ava. Hi, Ava Santina from uh, Politics Joe. Oh, I can't stand up. I've got a short skirt on. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, Lee, I just, we've spoken a lot here about protests, but what will your first domestic policy be for reform? I and mean, we've got teacher strike potentially in September. How will you handle that in Parliament? Oh, let me put that up, because on our website you've got our contract with you, which is uh, our equivalent of a manifesto, which sets out the, the whole... What will these be? Yeah, but hang, hang on. No, no, no. Lee is with us, and the key thing about that, we've touched on all the other things, the key thing is you've got to make work pay. And that's why the key economic policy of lifting the starting point to pay income tax to £20,000 from £12,500, that will make a massive difference to many, many people on modest incomes, on low pay. That will be the biggest single factor, and that's absolutely essential. I've signed up to the, the key pledges of the Reform Party, so it's on the website, Ava. Um, feel free to go. We'll have a look and say, yeah, Lee Anderson agrees with all of that. I think we've probably got one, time for one more. And, uh, yes, hello. Hi, I'm Amy Gibbons from The Telegraph. Um, Lee, you told me less than two months ago that there was no conceivable world in which you would join Reform. Yeah. And in your words, knife the Tories in the yeah. back. What was the turning point for you in the interim? Well, there's not been a turning point. I mean, we all know that sometimes politicians, Amy, are about as trustworthy as journalists um, with what they say and do. Um, but it's been, a, it's, it's been a gradual journey, and I think there's been several tipping points over the, the past few months. I, like I said in my speech, I've had to do a lot of soul-searching about you know, where I am, what I'm, what I'm doing. And when I find myself suspended, having the whip suspended, for speaking my mind, and by the way, speaking up on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who agree with me, that for me is, is unpalatable, it's, it's, it's a shocker, if, if I'm honest. I cannot be a part of a, an organisation which stifles free speech. And many of my colleagues in that place, in the Conservative Party, do back me on this, privately. Obviously they won't put their head above the parapet, I don't expect them to. But more importantly, people around the country and around the world have been messaging me, sending me emails saying, stick to your guns, Lee, we agree with you. Isn't it about time somebody spoke out for us? rather than bearing to that lot over there. Thank you very much. So that concludes our press conference. I really appreciate you uh, attending, and then I think we're doing some one-to-one -one interviews and the like. Thanks very much indeed. Have a great week. <laughs> <laughs>